Hi, this is Greg Monty. I'm back on um, module number four, learning, broad, learning Blade video module number four. Hopefully you're following up um, video module number one where you got your logins, you set up your classes and class codes, and now you're looking to implement Learning Blade supplemental STEM education into Canvas. So let's go forward right away. We um, did do a beta launch with many schools, about a half dozen were pretty good users of Learning Blade in the spring. And then we took the best practices from those and tried to come up with a uh, very simple approach for the teachers to implement Learning Blade. Uh, you've already done module one, so you saw how simple it is to get yourself registered and set up your classes. And now what we want to do is set up the assignments. So our goals for this rollout across Guilford County Schools, and I think we've got about 80% of the schools are participating right now. Um, the minimum effort for the teachers is what we want. We want you to have to spend as little time. Uh, we know you're all overworked. And then after you uh, put your assignments in Canvas, the teacher's only additional role is going to be to remind the students to complete their assignments and then record the students' progress as they complete their assignments. So um, what we're, what we're going to do, let me go to the goals for this particular video module. I'm going to give you a suggested strategy to implement supplemental learning blade activity using Canvas. And then this is going to be followed by a description of the implementation done by the Lincoln Academy teacher, Laura Howard, who happened to be the biggest super user of Learning Blade in the spring. So let's go back to this presentation. We gave you uh, a text template, or um, we gave you some uh, visibility to that text template briefly in module number one. But I want to do uh, now is to give you a little bit more details on that. So we go back to Emergence STEM, the resources page, the plug and play videos for launching Learning Blade, and then pull up these instructions for launching Learning Blade in GCS middle schools. And what you'll see on here um, in the Appendix 2, which is near the bottom, is the template for doing a Canvas implementation. So this describes Learning Blade a little bit, talks about um, what the assignment's going to be. In her case, she did express missions per month. You could do them per two months, per semester, if you would, to reduce the uh, load or the amount of time that the students are using the software. Talk about the grades. You can change these terms monthly, bi-monthly, per semester. Um, you can give points uh, for, their, for their work based on percentages that they complete and get scores on those missions. That's the gold stars that they receive when they do the things. Um, give them some reminders. Tell them how to get started. Remember that you need to give them a, another assignment to make sure that they complete their parent consent form. I would suggest that the easiest way to do this uh, is to use the honor system. Have them all take the, uh, this description, which you have an extra piece of paper that you can um, print out and cut these, in, these instructions out for the students to do, and have them take them home, work with their parents, and complete the consent form. I'll know whether or not it was done, because I can only use the data from the pre-surveys and post-surveys that will come later if the assent form and consent form have been submitted. So each of those has the student ID number in it. The really critical element there is making sure that they use their 9 to 12 digit student ID, cafeteria ID, that number that they use throughout the school system all the time. Um, so you can have them do this consent form, make it an assignment. Um, they could take a video shot, or you could have them just say, I completed the assignment, prove it to you somehow that they did it. Um, if you, if need be, I could uh, check um, to see whether they did the consent form if I had a list of all of the student ID numbers from your school, uh, from your class. And um, that might be possible for me to check. All right. So then uh, when they submit their work, it's essentially they log in with their student login. When they do that, they click on the My Missions page. And what comes up on the My Missions page is a description of their missions. And they can 
change missions, switch their missions to look at the ones that they've done, and they can print out this screenshot, which will say how much of the, what the status of each of those tools and teammates has been, um, what their mission score is, that's the percentage of the correct answers, and then uh, the number of tools they completed, the number of teammates they've earned, and so forth. Or if they're doing an express mission, it'll show um, a different set of information. But this is the way um, this is the way it's done. And for an express mission, um, they only have one uh, lesson in each one of the tools and one lesson in each one of the teammates. So they'll that's what their scores will be based upon. Okay. So they if they do just that one lesson, they'll have completed that particular tool. If they've completed the lesson for machinists, they'll have completed that particular teammate. So I would uh, urge you to um, use this information that's already been written, if it works for you, and just cut and paste that into your uh, Canvas implementation. So let's go back to um, this diagram. So the template, um, oops, excuse me. The template was provided. I just showed you it's in the instructions for launching Learning Blade and GCS Middle Schools in section three of the virtual notebook under this location. So the suggested strategy is the one um, that makes it the easiest for you, in my opinion. So if you uh, science teachers are the ones that are implementing Learning Blade initially, um, you can expand to English, social studies, and math teachers at a later time, or you can do that now if they're all gung-ho to get going. And then um, you can put the assignment into Canvas using the template, give grades or extra credit as you choose, and ask the students, um, this is the suggested strategy, ask them to complete one express mission of their choice per month. Um, so that would be 10 lessons or activities, about two hours of time or about 30 minutes of work per week. Some students, some teachers might want to do just one express mission every two months. So that would reduce the load to, in half to about 15 minutes per week or about one lesson per week. This is the really simple way because when the student logs in, they're going to see their express missions uh, listed on the screen and they can pick the one that looks interesting to them. And since it's interesting, they'll probably enjoy doing the work and they'll get plenty of exposure to different kinds of careers that they um, think they might want to be in. If you want to do additional Learning Blade lessons, this is what I would suggest there. Science, English, Math, and Social Studies teachers would assign the remaining lessons for their subject matter, Science, English, Math, or Social Studies, from the full missions for um, the express missions that the students selected to complete. So the students will already have done an express mission. In those, they'll have done some English, some social studies, some math, and some science, about 10 lessons. But they that will still leave about seven or eight lessons of all these different areas, science, English, math, and social studies, or about another one and a half hours of additional work time to be done. So if you're a science teacher, they did an express mission of 10 lessons. They probably have done only two to three science lessons in that. So if you want them to do more science lessons, you could just say, since you're working on that express mission, maybe the dolphin uh, rescue, ask them to complete the other seven or eight science lessons in that, and that would add an additional one and a half hours of work time. And you can put that into your Canvas um, worksheet. So as I said, um, these are the full missions. This is what the student sees when they log in. They'll have a list of all the missions by name the mission goals, and then there'll be start buttons for full missions and express missions. And they can, if they want to do uh, one on flu outbreak, then they can hit the start button button for the express mission right here and, and so forth. And then once they're done, they'll, ju they'll just take a screenshot of the work that they did and they'll submit that to you through Canvas and you'll be able to give them credit for their work done. All right. So that's it. This is what the student sees when they log in. The students can pick the express mission or missions of their choice to work on, or you as a teacher could prescribe the missions that you want the students to do and then just have them submit, the, submit their results. So the next thing you'll see in this video module number four for Learning Blade will be Laura Howard telling you exactly how she did her implementation at um, Lincoln Academy. 
Thanks very much, and good luck with all your uh, work with Learning Blade. Feel free to call me or email me at any time if you need some help. And we'd be certainly happy to come over and give you additional training if you want to dive deeper into Learning Blade and learn about all its bells and whistles. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you helping this research project. Bye. Hi, my name is Laura Howard. I am a science teacher at the Academy at Lincoln. And I made this video to show you guys some of the ways that I have incorporated Learning Blade into my classroom. Um, first of all, the easiest way that I found to integrate Learning Blade as a supplemental resource in the classroom was um, by setting up a Learning Blade section in our Canvas course. So you can see I had a Learning Blade module. Um, the first uh, page under the Learning Blade module was the instructions on how to submit um, the survey and how to set up student logins and then the second was the actual assignment where they turned in evidence of their completed missions. So for the setup page um, I just gave some information here because this was the beta test year um, and I explained to them that um, I would be accessing their grades and for them they had to do one mission per month and I'll show you what I mean by a mission in a second. Um, so to get full credit 100 for their mission what I set as the criteria were that they had to score at least 70% on each portion and that they had to have an overall score of at least 70. Um, and so I always had them do the express option in their missions and um, as well down at the bottom they had information here where they had to get started and um, these are just were documents that I submitted onto Canvas that were directly from Learning Blade that showed them how they could set up using their student number. So then um, when the kids launched Learning Blade, they completed modules and they have screens that look like this. So on the student account, they can actually go in and they it'll list out all of the different assignments that they've done, all the different missions. So this particular student, Elizabeth, had completed Hack Attack Express and so she submitted this assignment for her credit here. And um, I found this to be the easiest way for kids to give me their feedback because on this screen you can see that she did complete every one of her many missions which would be these individual things either studying the tools or the careers involved. Um, I can see here that she had an overall mission score of 94. Um, you know, she completed 100% of the tools, 100% of the teammates. What it says here, missions completed, this was actually her second mission um, out of the five she had to complete. So that's where that number comes from. So I found that to be a very easy way to run Learning Blade. The kids just completed this on their own time. As a student, they could come in and click on these mini missions to complete them. And if they left and came back to it, it would save their work. And each of these typically would take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the content and the pace of the student. So they completed these and they just uploaded them. And I told them that they had to be uploaded by midnight, the last day of the month. And the first day of the next month, I would just come through and grade the assignments. Um, another thing that I have found helpful since Learning Blade, we're here toward the end of school and I've been looking for opportunities to fill some of that space after testing. And so when you log into Learning Blade with your teacher login information. Um, there are several things that you can look at. Um, the first thing is I love the resources. Um, up at the top there it'll show your students that are enrolled and what classes you've got them in but if you click this resource button then it actually gives you some great resources down here. So mission challenges actually open up as PDF files where you can actually see some specific things that you could work on. I think I had one open. Yeah. Um, so like here's the dolphin rescue mission challenge and we used this just today after our testing so it gives some information here about what you're going to be looking at rehabbing a dolphin and helping with a prosthetic tail and so um, as you come down it's actually got the printable project sheet and it connected this was good because we just finished 
um, all of our year and a big part of it was looking at forces and energy and simple machines and so you can see that there's a lever here and so it's lab based looking at balancing forces and the lever and then comparing that to how the fluke of a dolphin works and how scientists would have to apply that information to create a prosthetic tail for a dolphin. So the kids really enjoyed this. It gave them hands-on inquiry based um, instruction. It was fun for after testing and incorporated the numeracy skills. Um, if you go back, they also have uh, paper craft, which are um, just some fun things. So I had the kids print these out if they wanted to, and a lot of them did because they enjoyed them. So again, this is the paper craft for the dolphin rescue. So each of the teammates, or each which are their careers, um, there's these little block people that you can create. So my kids printed them on cardstock, and they had learned about the role of the biomedical engineer. And then you can see the next one here is your machinist who actually creates the prosthetic and then uh, the marine biologist and so each of them you know it's just fun um, then you have uh, parent activities these are discussion activities that the parents can do with their kids to be a part of what they're doing in the classroom and I don't have access to any TI calculators but those of you that do they also have connections um, to the curriculum with some calculator activities. So all of these are easy ways, even if you don't do the entire mission, that you could pull in some of the inquiry-based activities and tie into uh, between the content you're learning in the classroom and some of the careers and some of the relevant real-world research aspects. Um, the other thing that you can do, which I have done with my kids, is you can click the curriculum preview here. And when you hit the curriculum preview it's going to open I'll close these back out these are all of the different missions so when we talk about a mission we talk about the entire um, packet here so if I double click on dolphin rescue the mission would include learning about artificial limbs radio tracking diving gear cell phones as your tools and then the people in the process the marine biologist biomedical engineer machinist vet scuba diver and um, people working with the antibiotics and so all of these tools and all of these careers are involved in getting a dolphin a prosthetic limb and so the kids really enjoyed going through that on their own but if you don't have time for them to do it on your own then you can actually click on these things and nail down to the specific one that you're interested in so if I wanted to look at diving gear and I want to talk about how we observe sea life in a submarine then you can open just that mini mission and launch that and so you could project this up on the screen and have the kids complete it with you um, so y'all can read things and talk about it and you could click through it the kids could click through it so even if you didn't want them to do this on their own um, you could see how that just even the mini missions might tie in to what you're doing and you could use it as part of your presentation part of your lecture you could assign mini missions as additional practice for your kids um, so what you know just lots of different ways of incorporating this in a variety of um, processes based on what you need in your classroom